it's Liz Yule from Old Stables Crafts. Welcome back to my uh, YouTube channel. Today I am taking part in a hop, so a blog hop with the Stampin' Hop group. Uh, so we're going a little earlier than normal, quite a lot earlier than normal, but it's Simple Stamping Saturday, so it's still sam Simple Stamping Saturday. Now the theme for our hop is to case one of our own projects um, and just recreate it using different supplies. So I thought as we're doing simple stamping and the theme sort of for this month is thanks, because obviously we're in that whole time of the year, I would go for a thank you card using Country Home, which was in the Autumn Winter Catalogue last year and has carried over to the Annual Catalogue this year. So I thought that would be a really good one to have a look at because it is still with us. Um, if you don't have it, it is gorgeous. There are sentiments that will do for all sorts of occasions. So, you know, you are the happy to my day can be anything. Simple, Simply thankful for all the good things can be pretty much anything. Happy Harvest Blessings, which I used this last weekend for my harvest favours for the, uh, we had our harvest supper. Um, so I use that for our harvest supper table favours um, and there's grateful and we've got a milk can and a jug and it's just I love it um, when I had this last year with the whole suite it was just oh loved it so the project that I am casing is one that was back in let me see when was it 22nd of December last year um, and I will have a link on my blog to that um, so we had this array of cards um, and I've sort of recreated it, the feel of it, with the Country Home stamp set. So let me show you what I have done. So as ever, as, is, as it's Simple Stamping Saturday, we're using note cards and envelopes. So I've used the In Colour Stamp and Write markers because it's a really affordable way of getting the five ink colours um, and I've used those to colour in my image and I've just used Memento for the stamping so long as you leave it to dry well it will be fine with the stamp and write markers so that's my simple stamping and because it's simple stamping obviously we're stamping on the envelope so that's the simple one and I will make that and then show you what I've done to step it up so I'm using as you can see from the sample I'm using these two stamps and then I'm using this and this so that we get the thanks it is you know you've got to line up through the stamp but it's not difficult now I am going to use my pierce mat because I have found that particularly the floral is a little stubborn when it comes to stamping nicely um, so I am using this even though I've got padding underneath my stack of grid paper I'm going to use the piercing mat just to give me that extra little bounce. So the first thing I'm going to do is ink up my milk churn and stamp that sort of towards the bottom and slightly off centre. I think things look better somehow if they're not absolutely ping on centre. I think it looks more meant. Uh, right, so we'll do the inside first so we'll do the little label let's pop that there then it's slightly further out of my way um, just checked that it was still in camera which it is and there's our label and because you can see through because it's photopolymer really quite simple now the thanks is obviously going to be slightly trickier but only very slightly trickier just make sure you've got it well inked up and I can see the two um, circles either side and that's what I was lining up against with my thanks. Now this one is the one that is more stubborn. So it's a really good thick pattern. So that's probably why it's a little more stubborn. And just line it up. so that it's sort of on top of the churn but not 
overlapping it because we don't really want to see the lines so really happy with that and because I've used the piercing mat which I didn't use last time I've got a much better image so that's good right okay oh and before I forget let's do the envelope because that means that's then done so let me grab that's the one I've already done it's always helpful if you bring in the one you haven't done first so I'm going to pop a piece of scrap paper underneath because I don't want the um, I don't want the image to go onto the back of the envelope. I just want it on the flap at the back, and the image is slightly larger than the flap. So okay, that's reasonably well inked up, and I could be really sad and sort of centralise my. There we are, pretty centred. And then I can just come in with my stamp and stamp. And there we have our lovely envelope. OK, so pop that away, get rid of that so I don't end up picking up leftover ink on my hand. And I've got my five stamp and write markers. I actually didn't use the purple posy, so I'll move that one out of the way. Um, and I have got, you can see, I've got some difference of colours um, and I will show you how I did that. So first thing I'm going to do is colour in the churn. So let's do that. And I'm just basically going backwards and forwards across the whole of the top. And I am going to do this in sections, but I'm just going backwards and forwards across there and then the handle on both sides okay so that's that piece then we'll go around here and then I'm going to go around the label first and then for no real reason other than I just found it a little easier I'm going to go up and down on this And then there. Now, I don't know if you can see. So this one is reasonably, for a stamp and write marker, reasonably smooth in its finish, whereas this one is a bit scrappy. So what I'm now going to do is allowing, having allowed it to dry off a bit. Oh, actually, I can do the thanks first, can't I? So let's do the thanks. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go side to side. The key to using Stampin' Write markers is to not go backwards and forwards over the same spot until you've allowed the ink to dry. So now that the top is dry, I can go back over it and go in the opposite direction. This also helps to make sure you don't peel your card because you're moving everything in a slightly different direction. Now that will dry back a bit, but I hope you can see that that is a much smoother finish. I may go over it again and then up and down on that piece and then where I went up and down on this lower bit before I'm going to go side to side Obviously, there are some bits where it's almost impossible to go side to side because they're narrow. But there we go. And then that I went across. So I'll go up and down. And that is a much smoother finish than we had. Um, I may need to go back in and do a third layer. Uh, but I'm going to leave that for the moment until I've coloured everything else because then this will be really dry. OK, bull rushes I'm doing in terracotta tile. It's not quite the right colour for bull rushes, but it's OK. I'm going to take some liberties with the colours and then I'm just going to do these berry blobs in the same colour. And then I will come back with this, but for the moment that's that. 
Um, oh, actually, no, it's not. I've got to do my... My, I think it's an artichoke, and again, the artichoke probably shouldn't be this colour, but guess what? It's my artichoke, so I'm going to have it whatever colour I want. And by artichoke, I mean globe artichoke, not Jerusalem. So if there are any gardeners watching, it is a globe artichoke, not a Jerusalem artichoke. Right, and Rococo Rose for the leaves and again this is taking a little bit of liberty but I do have some plants that are kind of leaf based that are this sort of colour particularly at this time of year so it's not too much of a liberty mine are probably a bit more blackberry bliss than rococo rose but you know I'm okay with that so that I'm leaving but I am going to come in and colour in there I think that's a gap so I'm going to leave it as a gap. And then... Colour that in, and colour this in. And all we've really got to do is have a look at our churn and see if that needs any help, which I don't think it does, and just do our little leaves, which I'm doing in Pretty Peacock, and I'm using the thin nib for that, because these are tiny, and I don't think my control is good enough to do those with the, um, with the brush tip, that's the word I'm looking for. So I'm in a bit of a I'm on a bit of a sort of crusade at the moment because it suddenly dawned on me that we're kind of ignoring the annual catalogue. We're all excited about the autumn winter catalogue, and it is very exciting. Don't get me wrong, I love it. I've got lots of it, um, but we are kind of ignoring the annual catalogue. Uh, the annual catalogue is with us for three months on its own. Then we get the autumn winter then we get celebration and the spring summer and then we get a new annual catalogue so we kind of forget for nine months of the year that we've got something that we can still play with so yeah I'm I'm on a crusade right I'm going to just add a bit more to the bulrushes just to darken those down a wee bit and there we go. So fold that in half and pressed. And there is our second little note card and envelope duo. Now, what have I done to step them up? OK, so for someone who's a more, you know, got a few more bits and pieces, I've added the um, in colour cardstock pack and some just ordinary whisper white. This I have coloured with the um, Stampin' Right markers again, and I've used the In Colour pattern paper pack, and I've just fussy cut and popped on dimensionals. And, you know, it just steps it up a wee bit, and I've just realised something I haven't done to my other version, which is using the blends instead of the markers. So all of this is coloured with blends. Um, for the orange, we don't have a terracotta tile um, blend, that's the word. Gosh, my brain. So I've used Cajun Craze. craze. It's not quite the right colour, but it's close enough. Uh, and then I've added some of the Rococo Rose and Gold. Let me pull it out and tell you what it's called. It is Gathered Ribbon, and it's Rococo Rose um, and Gold sort of taffeta, but with a... It's like the real red ribbon but narrow so it's like this which is ruched rather than gathered but it's the same idea um, so it's got this gathering bit in the middle and then a straight edge but it's gorgeous I haven't used it enough but because it's Rococo Rose I thought I would pair it with 
uh, this and then I've just wrapped it round and then tied a short piece across to make it look like the two ends are tied together and then I don't know if you can see I've got the faceted dots and these are in colour these are seaside spray um, you get a huge sheet um, with all the colours on and yeah it's lovely all those lovely colours so I've just put a little triangle as is my thing now what I didn't do which I did on the casual version is add some wink of Stella over the thanks just because I can so I am just to give it a little subtle bling so there we go the order is simple straightforward just one ink pad and the stamp and write markers then add some designer series paper and some fussy cutting and then add some ribbon and um, some gems so I hope you enjoyed that. I will link my original post in the in the post that I do for this, and that is linked below. There's also a list of all the products I've used below. So if you want to shop with me and you're in the UK, that would be fantastic. Um, I've also got a list over on my website. And for the dimensions, again, go to my website, and that's linked, as I say, immediately below. If you've enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, there's a button in the bottom right hand corner where you can subscribe so you, you won't miss any future videos. Um, do go over to my website and have a look at the blog hop because there will be some amazing projects, I have no doubt at all. Thank you very much indeed for joining me and I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye!